ducks. Beautiful, cuddly, friendly, happy, horrifying. Tonight, Deep Fat Fried. Deep Fat Fried! Ducks are not horrifying, Paul. Um, Come on, Paul. Ducks are not horrifying. You want us to believe that ducks are evil? They look look how cute and fluffy they are. I didn't necessarily ducks say are evil. Adorable. I don't believe in evil, but right. you said horrifying. Horrifying is not evil. That's just okay. They're horrifying. I get you. I get you. Don't 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 count your ducks before they're hatched. There, TJ. You'll see. Okay. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Uh. If you thought if you told most people like close their eyes and picture a duck, they'd probably picture one of these ducks here. Uh, these yes. are these are Pekin ducks, Pekin ducks, um, Pekin. and there's various hybrids of them. Okay. Uh, they're primarily domesticated and used for farming. These this type of duck, I think you know, like probably a lot of people just associate ducks with Donald Duck, and Donald Duck is a Pekin duck. Uh, he's white, yeah, white duck, yeah. Um, and the breed uh, is the heavy breed class. They have long bodies and quite long necks for ducks. They're very large breasted. That's one hot fucking duck. I like about them. Yeah, I don't want to say nothing, but uh, since you broached the topic and shit, you know, this duck is fucking. Look at the breasts on this quack here. Fucking fine. And they got the trademark orange bill and reddish orange feet that you probably associate with ducks. Um, One of the reasons why these yeah. ducks were domesticated is because they can be raised in a lot of different climates. They're extremely cold hardy, uh, which makes them compatible for very low and moderately high temperatures. So, you know, they can they, they don't have they're not as selective with their environments as other breeds of ducks are. Uh, other uh, over the years, uh, Pekins have become one of the most common production ducks in the world uh, because they're so domesticated. They also make really great pets. Um, Pekins are dabbling ducks, which means they get their food from land and the water surface rather than by diving for it. You might have observed ducks as I have in the past and seen them kind of like bobbing under the water of a lake. Yeah. That's not these. These guys don't fuck around with that shit. They don't do that shit. They They're like half chicken, half ducks, you know? Yeah, they they scoop things up with their beak off the ground. They skim stuff off the top of the water, but they're not going very far under to get anything. Hmm, gotcha. Um, they also that also means they're like goats, and they will eat pretty much anything. Um, they have a tendency, probably another reason why they were uh, farmed uh, to be overweight. So, <laughs> uh, if you're keeping them as pets, their diet needs to be monitored and not over supplemented with grains like corn. Mm, nice and fat. That's how <laughs> I like a duck. I like my ducks nice and fat. Yeah, fat ducks. Otherwise, With they some will blow. Fat up. duck titties, like in that fucking Howard the Duck. You know what I'm saying? Remember the duck titties and Howard the Duck. Oh yeah, the duck titties. Oh, are, they're right at the beginning. Right. Yeah. Was when he's uh, flying through dimensions. They're like, wouldn't it be funny if we had a big old pair of duck titties? And like, people made that, and they shot that, and they looked at that, and they said, "Yes." Dude, I heard a rumor that that fucking Doctor Strange multiverse movie that's coming up is going to have Howard the Duck in it. It fucking goddamn well better. I, I bet you it will, dude. I fucking bet you it he, will. I am he, ready for the a, triumphant return. He's a Marvel character. He's like yes. a Marvel comic book character. A lot of people. He was the. Know. He was in the one. One of the, yeah, end he was credits. In the he was credits of. Uh, was it a Guardians the Galaxy or something? Dude, Howard the Duck needs to make an appearance. Yeah, I, don't he give, does. I, I mean, it's time for to come back. God damn it, dude! How the Duck versus Thanos, dude? Let it happen. Oh man, he'd beat Thanos' ass. He beat the fucking uh, princes of the darkness or whatever the fuck that was you can beat thanos what the fuck is this goddamn shit so i saw what what's wrong with this duck why does he got a strawberry for a head what's nothing's, going on nothing's wrong with him this is just a muscovy duck i muscovy i don't like it Get i actually here. saw one of these ducks at my i got a little local park that's got a big old pond in it and there's tons of ducks around it. and i saw one of these dudes waddling around with the other ducks and i was like Oh man, right. he's got like herpes or some shit, man. That yeah, poor. There's something wrong with duck. that duck. That duck's fucked up. He got some kind of fucking bird virus or something. And then um, Amelia looked it up, and nope, that's just what they look like—a face uh, only a mother could love, as they say. 
Um, these large ducks are common in parks, lakes, streams, zoos, and farms because pe- people often feed them at these sites. Uh, Muscovies are large ducks with long, flat tails and large claws in comparison to other ducks. Uh, males, or drakes as they're called, often appear brighter and their black feathers reflect a purple tint, whereas females are more drab in appearance. Um, mm-hmm. I thought this one has a bad comb over, though. Yeah, he's got like a very like I don't know like an Italian Chad haircut. Feels uh, like does this cover a like, uh, red spot on my head? Uh, yeah. yeah oh sure yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, don't even notice it. Red spot? I don't even see it. What? Yeah. What are you What are you talking about? <laughs> I can't tell. Totally uh, covered up by your feathers, bro. Totally covered up. Can't even see it. Can't even notice it, bro. You good? Their, uh, good. their trademark is their fleshy red caruncles or warty bumps. Um, they're more prominent in males and they're usually all over the face and neck. Uh, additionally, the male muscovies are somewhat larger than the females. Uh, they differ from other ducks because rather than calling with a quack, the male's call is a loud, dry hiss and the females is quiet too. So I actually pulled a, so it's uh, a, it's a demon duck that hisses at you. Cool. Yeah. Th- this is a male muscovy hissing. Okay. It reminds me of a dog. Yeah, he does kind of sound like a dog when they're panting at you. He's wagging his tail, his little butt tail. Yeah, he's, he, he loves it. He's having a good time. He wants pets. <laughs> Sam? You have all the, see, Taylor's always trying to sell me again a bird, but she's never shown me like some shit like this. Like, look at how much this duck loves you. Yeah. Oh, ducks. Ducks are actually really, really good pets. They don't like being alone, though. So you got to keep a few ducks. Ducks. But yeah, no, ducks make great pets. Um, but yeah. Th- so the hiss and then and the females are just very like I have a very quiet kind of like. <laughs> so they don't really quack like a normal duck does. Uh, but let's get out of domesticated ducks for a minute. Let's talk about some wild uh, and, in my opinion, prettier ducks. Let's talk about um, some real fucking ducks. Before man got it, we commodified them, we homogenized them, turned them into fucking weird strawberry face pieces of shit. Let's look at some real motherfucking ducks from nature, bro. Yep. Just how nature intended them. This this one is a harlequin duck. Yeah, um, it's got a cool name. Yeah, agreed. Uh, this not- tail is fucking badass. Look at it. Yeah, it is. I mean, everything about him is badass. He just looks fucking real. Yeah, his coloration is d- dope. Yeah, he's got a, he's got the edge lord colors: dark blood red, yeah. black and white. You, you know? can tell he's like fucking goth. He's probably listening Supplets to like black eyes. That like, doesn't fucking give a fuck, dude. Yeah, Bella Lugosi's dead by Bajas or some shit. Yep. He's a cool duck. Uh, this small yet adventurous seabird can be found diving for aquatic invertebrates in rough and fast moving mountain streams, river, rocky coastlines, and whitewater rapids. So this duck don't give a fuck, bro. No. This duck is a fucking thrill seeker. He will go in any kind of water. It doesn't matter how stormy or choppy it is. In fact, they, they prefer it that way because it churns up the fish under there and it makes it easier for him to get it. You know, he's like he thrives in chaos. This yep. duck is fucking. It's the adrenaline uh, junkie duck, dude. Yep. Yeah. Lots of this thrill. duck fucking rules. I definitely. Duck, definitely an ed- the edge lord of the Hell duck kingdom. Yeah. This duck's got some fucking shitty duck poetry you could fucking dredge up from his fucking teen years for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the males have a complex plumage pattern fe- featuring uh, chestnut and white patches on the head and the body. Females are overall grayish brown with white fur around the bill and eye and a neat white spot near uh, the rear of their cheek. Um, the species goes by many names, including a painted duck, a sea mouse, a rock duck, a glacier duck, and the white-eyed diver. Kind of hmm. cool. Uh, these ducks like to gather in small flocks along rocky coastlines, and when moving inland, pairs of holo- harlequins usually fly pretty low, following every bend of the river rather than taking overland shortcuts. So they, you know, they're ready to dive in at any fucking minute to capitalize and get. Yeah, they never get too far away. They just stay, stay along the fucking line of the water. Yep. Uh, In winter, it seems to choose the roughest coastal water with rocks pounded by the surf. Studies show that uh, many adult harlequins have had broken bones, uh, probably a result of their rough surroundings. So, you know, it's an evolutionary adaptation that doesn't always serve them, but they don't give a fuck. Uh, 
They yeah, they were up in a rough area. area. Look, these are a bunch of little rough. pussy fucking, oh, I'm a, oh, well, I'm hurt, I got hurt. These ducks don't give a shit. No, they don't. They walk that shit off. They don't give a fuck. They just keep going. Yep. Takes a lick and keeps on ticking. That's a motherfucking duck. I, I like I like this duck. Let's take a look at one other type of duck. Um, The Mandarin duck here. Whoa. Damn, yeah. that's the fancy duck. I mean, tell me about it, right? A very pretty duck. Uh, sp- uh, so it's a species of perching duck, meaning that they actually make nests and stuff. Oh, okay. Like, like up in the trees rather than, you know, are on the ground and stuff. Um, and it's native to East Asia, although it can now be found in England, Ireland, and California as captive individuals have escaped and created wild breeding population. Always good. Yeah. So they're an invasive species. All right. Yep. <laughs> uh, males are admired for their many bright colors and their hot pink bills. Oh, yeah. Uh, they face a population decline in Asia due to logging and their habitat being uh, destroyed, but they've managed to avoid uh, human hunters because they don't, they taste like shit. Good for them. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're just like, apparently like just a horrible bird to have to eat. They, their meat is horrible. It has a tangy, weird gamey taste and it's tough and there's not much on them anyway. They're mostly feather, you know, what do they eat? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm probably, not, Cause usually, kimchi just, or some shit probably <laughs> yeah <laughs> kimchi uh, ducks bro yeah because i was wondering like they taste like shit it might be what they're uh it's part of their diet they might just eat some shit that you know doesn't taste good to people so watch one of these motherfuckers get smacked by a pigeon yeah yeah i did pull, pull a video of that this pigeon's gonna come smack this fucker in the fucking face yeah. it was on his turf it's fucking will smith pigeon gonna slap the chris rock duck duck is eating all doing? the fucking seeds and the pigeon's you a like you're greedy motherfucker Yummy. Get out of here. See oh, that? shit. Pigeon was like, bitch, like, leave a few for my- us. Yeah, like, Jesus Christ, you fucking hog. That duck fucking tore that shit up. Yeah. Pigeons pi- can't even compete. Yeah. Pigeons have to get pick hit. like, oh, damn, just whacking it. Yeah, smack multiple times there. S- still didn't get oh, any less seeds, though. The mantle went after. Whoa. Oh. He's like, fuck you. You smack me, I beat you, bitch. Yeah. Those pigeons are just salty that they didn't evolve a nice big wide bill that can eat multiple seeds at once, you know? Yeah, it's like these ducks are just like, these pigeons are like, ooh, I'll take, ooh, I can't get it. Uh." Pigeons, also pretty great pets, too. Uh, yeah, they're not. A lot of of people keep pigeons. Fucking sky rats, that's all they are. No, they're they're, they're, they're nice little birds. They're really nice. They're actually really easy to own, too. Yep. Easy to take care of. Another bird that doesn't like being alone, though. Gotta have multiple pigeons. I don't yeah, think I mean, any like, bird really likes being alone for prolonged period of times and uh, periods of time in captivity. Shoe Bill Stark does. Oh yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, well, a, that's a shoe bill. Come on, that's, <laughs> that's a weird. Still, that's a different right story. Now. The shoe bill's a different story. So, uh, as I said, unusual for a duck. This type of duck nests in trees. Um, they make their nest high up uh, above the water. The mother must coax her ducklings to jump from the nest. So the first thing you got to do, I guess, when you grow up as a one of these ducks is jump out of your nest into the water. Uh, and then at the, I guess at that point, the dad will come back and go like, all right, the kids are viable. I'll help raise them, I suppose. Um, and that's kind of fucked up. The dad doesn't want to have anything to do with them until he knows they can get out of the nest. And he's like, all right, yeah, I guess I'll do it. That's important. You got to make sure that you can leave the nest because, you know, so I mean, look today, at all the needs. today I learned that my dad was a duck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, uh, ducks don't tolerate neats, man. That's the difference. Human society will put up with that. The dad ducks are like, can you actually leave on your own and survive? All right, I'll help you. Um, compared to other ducks, mandarins are pretty shy, too. So you, they're they're harder to get pictures like that of. Uh, so let's talk about some duck facts now that we've been introduced to a few different species of duck. Uh, right. Let's get into some interesting, weird, and I'll be honest with you, sometimes disturbing duck facts first. We ain't getting those weird corkscrew dicks. Oh, uh, we'll get happen. there. I mean, you got you got to right. know what's on here, TJ. You got to know. Uh, and you said horrifying. I figured it had maybe something to do with that. Uh, sure. Uh, don't you worry. Don't you worry, TJ. Uh, but we're going to start down at the bottom of the duck with these webbed feet. The strangest thing about these webbed feet is that they have no nerves or nerve endings at all in them. Okay. They're totally dead. Um, gotcha. Uh, birds can't feel them getting cold. They can't feel anything on them. 
Uh, ducks, I guess, as, as well as seagulls and geese, can sleep the entire night on uh, standing on the ice in sub-zero temperatures if they have to. Uh, hmm. They're like weird bionic terminator birds. They've developed a very specific body anatomy to deal with cold winter lakes and their chilly, watery lifestyle. Uh, we all know that ducks have webbed feet, but did you know that a duck can restrict blood flow to his feet? So no, I didn't know that. As the temperature drops, less blood will flow to a duck's extremities. Uh, This is how a duck can swim for hours and hours and hours in water that would kill another animal, a warm-blooded animal. Um, And, you know, stand around on ice or whatever it wants to. Duck feet also change color during the mating season, much like a red baboon's butt. (laughs) A, A duck's foot will swell and turn bright red when they're beginning to pair off. So as they get hornier, I guess their feet start to get fatter and redder. Look oh, how red man. my feet are, baby. Oh, oh look, look at my look. red feet. You got to fuck me, baby. Look at that. Yep. Got to uh, take my corkscrew dick <laughs> and your weird duck pussy, <laughs> baby. Look at how red my feet are, girl. Search all your canals, baby. Yep. Uh, both male and female feet stay all swollen and angry and red till the summer when they turn a drab color again to blend in with their surroundings, I guess. So after mating's done, they go back to a normal color, and that's all right, I'm We're done fucking rutting, y'all. Let's go back to normal for a while. Yep. We'll get uh, back to it. Don't worry. So ducks, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but ducks have teeth in their bills. Like pretty yeah. vicious looking teeth in their bills, to be quite honest. I with have you. seen that shit. Yeah. There you go. Um, oh I got, no i got bit by a duck once uh, it wasn't super painful but it wasn't not painful yeah it's uh, it's definitely i've been goosed by a goose before mm-hmm. and they're similar to ducks and anatomy in this way and it's not a it's not a pleasant feeling it's not something that you would go back for more of all the time yeah like i tried to i was just like feeding ducks you know gave a little piece of bread but as you can see here it's not just their beaks that have teeth it's actually their tongue yeah their tongue has teeth which i did not know um avian tongues are different from the tongues of mammals mammal tongues are all muscle no bone but avian tongues have bone um ducks have bones that run down the middle of their two inch long tongues these boy uh, bones are called hyoid apparatus and they i guess support the larynx when feeding hmm. um there's one more difference in avian tongues they do not have taste buds on the surface but tiny papillae that protrude on either side of their tongues uh, the papillae help ducks hold their food and direct it towards the esophagus, and it helps them swallow it. Uh, they're omnivorous, meaning they can eat plants and animals equally. Uh, the teeth don't necessarily chew food, but grip it. Uh, so if they catch a fish or something, uh, it helps to keep the fish in place while they work it down their gullet. But fish can't taste or uh, ducks can't taste anything. Birds in general don't taste anything. And it's like I have eaten this thing. It gives me no yeah. pleasure to eat it, but I have eaten it. Yep. It's just sustenance. My feet feel nothing. My, my tongue cannot taste anything. <laughs> it's right. like, damn, I don't, I don't think I want to be a duck. I am a duck. I have no feelings. I have no soul. Rawr! And uh, their teeth absolutely do nothing for chewing, which means right. that they have to figure out a way to macerate their food. Too far. And um, ducks do that by uh eating stones oh yeah so they eat that they eat little pebbles to break down their food in their gizzard so imagine organ i don't think i don't think humans have a gizzard they don't uh imagine walking around a beach picking up the sharpest rocks that you can find and then popping them into your mouth you swallow the sharp rocks they go into your tiny second stomach called a gizzard most birds have them why do ducks swallow sharp stones They grind up the bones of the fish that they swallow whole um, and other things. They break down vegetable matter. They just mat. Like I said, like they do what our teeth do. So we do all that shit in our mouths with our teeth. We put something in our mouth. We chew it up until it's all mush. And then it's prepared to go down into our stomach. Uh, Ducks can't do that. So they have to actually use pebbles off the ground to do it. I thought that was great. I never knew that. Um, It's called a gastrolith. Apparently, um, once the rocks are not sharp anymore, the ducks vomit them back up and go find another bunch of rocks. So eventually Ugh, their my, stomach acid. My and the stomach p- rocks are fucking yeah. weak. Blech. Oh, yeah. These aren't even sharp anymore. Got to go find some sharper rocks. 
Yep. Grind um, up my food once I've already eaten it. And they're actually really common to find these uh, gastroliths around ponds and stuff where a lot of ducks are. You might just see a little smooth, perfectly rounded stone near here and you pick it up. And it was something that got vomited up out of a duck's gut when it got uh, too smooth. Sexy. Um, there are plenty of examples of miners finding actual gold in the gizzards of ducks and other birds. Uh, the miners simply followed the ducks to where they'd been scratching around in the earth and found profitable ga- veins of gold there. Um, other intrepid people in the gold rush era would even pick through bird droppings trying to find gold nuggets. So there's got to be some kind of gold in here somewhere. Yeah, apparently Once we find the duck that's fucking doing it. I mean, it's kind of clever because, you know, like the ducks are going all over the fucking place. So if you can find a place where there's some gold and like, you know, you can follow those ducks around. Yeah. They're mining it have, for you, you know, and then you got to lean on some gold. You know? There's gold. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, those gizzards that they've got and the stones, they don't break everything down though. Um, ducks actually help fish distribute their young unintentionally because some fish eggs can survive a duck's entire digestive tract. It's fucking crazy, right? Uh, scientists were at first pretty puzzled on how fish sometimes appear out of nowhere in bodies of water. So, you know, scientists for a long time puzzled, like, here we've got this lake that's closed off from other water sources, and it's got this fish in it. How? Like, who, How the fuck did that fish get there? Um, scientists, like, uh, as long ago as the 1800s, naturalists proposed that birds might have a hand in carrying fish eggs to far-flung locales. However... Little formal research was done um, into the phenomenon until about 2019. Researchers fed eight captive mallards roughly 500 fertilized eggs from two types of invasive carp. Six of the ducks passed living eggs in their feces, but only one baby common carp and two Prussian carp successfully hatched, uh, according to the paper. These odds might seem like a vanishingly small success rate, but a single common carp can lay up to 1.5 million eggs. That's several times a year. This is according to Audubon. And mallards are virtually ubiquitous in North America, Asia, and Europe. Um, The ducks pooped out most of the viable eggs within an hour after eating them, per Science News. But uh, one took at least four hours inside the digestive tract and came out alive. Uh, The researchers tell Science News uh, that such a time window would afford ducks enough time to fly 10 or even 100 miles away from the source of a fish egg meal thus raining fish or at least invasive carp across the country. Hmm. So fucking ducks. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Now it's pretty much expect uh, accepted that du- this is part of the food chain is that ducks carry these little fish eggs with them and help fish to get into environments that they would have no natural access to, which is pretty fucking crazy. Uh, it's like pollinating a flower. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. With, with fish, fish um, flowers, uh, so a grand passage ever heard of this um this is when an entire population of ducks goes crazy um it usually happens after weird weather patterns occur sometimes a massive cold front will cause millions of ducks to migrate all at once i'm betting this is happening more uh, uh, probably <laughs> uh, yeah is. uh this phenomenon happens from time to time but it's always jarring and frightening to the people on the ground underneath these gigantic clouds of ducks Uh, In early November 1995, following a severe blizzard in the prairie pothole region, uh, millions of migrating ducks and geese jammed radar systems, grounded flights in Omaha, Nebraska, and Kansas City, Missouri. A Grand Passage is a terrifying sight, but ducks will always pass right over us humans. We're lucky that no uh, death from duck has been reported yet. (laughs) So my duck, but yeah, apparently I've never seen one of these. They're, they're relatively rare, but apparently people that have lived through them have described it as being just like utterly terrifying. The sound it's pretty crazy to think of like just a bunch of ducks being that, that fucking frightening. But I guess if it's like millions enough, of them, enough you know? ducks, it's like, Oh shit. They're blotting <laughs> yeah, out the sun. Ducks. You know, you can't um, see the and sky. No, a plague of ducks. Dude, um, three million ducks shows up outside your house, teacher. You're gonna be freaking out. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, I mean, There's so many ducks. I, yeah, I'd be pretty fucking weirded out by that's that. That's what I'm saying. Sure. Yeah, like obviously on paper it sounds like yeah, it's just a bunch of ducks, but dude, if that many of anything shows up, you're gonna be kind of freaked out. Yeah. yeah. 
And I mean, you know, they're noisy birds when they're flying too. And you usually see them in little small groups and stuff if they're flying around. And think about millions of that. Just like the cacophony of it alone would probably be pretty shocking. And then the darkness that was caused and just like how it seems to never end. Um, so now I know what you're thinking. You said horrifying, Paul. Let's get into some horrifying stuff. All right. Let's talk about the the horrible side of being a duck. And there, there are quite a few of these. There's quite a few horrible things. Um, all right. So let me give you an example. Some mallards but. in Romania were spotted by researchers doing some very insidious behavior. Okay. They noticed one adult and 10 juvenile mallards along the shore vigorously shaking the vegetation. But then the adult started shaking its head and squishing what was ever, whatever was in its beak. Uh, it turned out to be a fledgling gray wagtail. After the struggle with the fledgling's wings, the adult managed to gulp down the poor wagtail hole, but the mallards weren't done. They went back to the vegetation and flushed out another bird, this time a black red start fledgling, and the juvenile mallards drowned the fledgling and ate it. Damn, they're metal, dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is the first time that anybody's actually documented uh, this type of predation where, where ducks are, you know, just like ta- taking baby birds and eating them. So I guess this is pretty new that people even know that ducks get up to this. So this is a this is not even like a well-worn, well-known duck horror thing. This is just like, yeah, they eat babies. You know, well, you know. They're baby murders. They gotta get them when they're young. I mean, what do you, I mean, they can't eat a full sized one. Too hard to catch. But a baby. Yeah, I mean, they don't, I mean, don't got no teeth or goodies. nothing. So they gotta find something that's bite size, you know? So yeah. little baby bird, that's that's right in the duck's wheelhouse, man. Uh here's a quote. The fact that these individuals seem to have learned how to hunt birds is pretty extraordinary, Silviu Petrovon, a co author of the report, told the BBC. Uh potentially there's quite a lot of pressure for those fast growing juveniles to get animal protein intake. And therefore, they are looking at opportunities to supplement it. Um, ducks haven't evolved to eat other birds, which is why it was so hard for the adult to get the fucking bird down its throat. Um, also said Petrovan, digesting bones and feathers, that's something that mallards, uh, that's not something that mallards have really evolved to do. So pretty extraordinary that they saw them doing this. And they're still kind of baffled by the behavior, honestly, but... If it's yeah. happening well, now, ducks it's probably been happening for millions of years, and it's just never been. Ducks observed. just kind of fucking realize, like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yep. Supplement so. my protein by eating this fucking thing. How? Yeah, give me some sharp stones down there, so break up that fucking mm. shit. Um, but oh, as TJ pointed out, the little most, macaroni dick, little the weird yep. macaroni noodle, a little rotini no- dick. Yeah. There. Um, yeah. The most disturbing aspect of ducks is their sex lives. Uh, their genitals are exceedingly strange. Yeah. Um, and I find this to be true, at least in my experience, most animals that have a cock or a vagina, it, it's pretty much like it looks pretty uniform. You know, there's definitely like a shape, like a phallic shape in not every animal, but most animals have a, you know, some gotta, kind of yeah. fucking thing you recognize. You look at it and be like, that is a penis, right? They got a ducks wiener. ain't got that going on. No, no ducks uh, and pigs also. Pigs too. Yeah, that's weird. Um, so weird in some species of ducks, uh, in some species of duck, the penis grows in the breeding season and then degenerates. So think about this: you don't even have a cock most of the year, and then breeding season comes along, and all of a sudden, this big fucking macaroni cock grows inside of you. Mm-hmm. You go fuck, and then when you're done, it just rots and falls off. What 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 what? what? And then next, <laughs> next wait a minute, season, what? you grow another one. Like, don't get attached to your cock, Scotty, because it's only here for the breeding season, and that motherfucker's no. dropping off. What do you think Goblin. about that? I would Goblin. not want that for you. I'm glad humans do not have that problem because that'd be kind of terrifying. Like, well, it's dick season. No, oh, no, my cock's riding off. I don't know. See it might be year. kind of fun though to get a fresh dick every year. You know? What yeah, I mean? you never know. I'm like. Man, I'm gonna eat really well this year. Grow a really big dick this time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, poor second chance. Give me another chance, <laughs> poor man. Dude is like, give me another chance, bro. Give me Come one on. more chance, man. Give me one more chance. 
So as you can see, this is a male duck here. They got corkscrew penises that are uh, mm-hmm. literally covered in tiny little barbs everywhere. Oh, yeah. You just can like see the their, barbs. Just like their tongues. I'll try and get close here for people. I'll blow it up to the... Yeah, and then you can uh, zoom on it. Yeah. So you can see the like little barbed ridges there coming off the, the duck penis. Very... That, that already is like... I don't know. It's like Lovecraftian, right? It's like yeah. a, a barbed spiral tentacle. <laughs> I know. Yeah, dude. It's like it, it almost feels like there's like a like a macaroni noodle or some shit like stuck to its ass. It really does. Um, so the size of that penis too, TJ, if you ever if you if you die and you get reincarnated as a as a duck. Oh, and, shit. Yeah, you can see one here, too. It's getting bigger. It's mm-hmm. getting bigger. Uh, it depends on the environment. Yeah, I guess. So research led by uh, a guy named Brennan in 2017 found that drakes that were surrounded by other males grew much longer penises than those that lived in a pair with a female. Uh, The lake duck, a species of South America, holds the record for the world's largest avian penis and the (laughs) longest penis in relation to body length of any vertebrate. Uh, the record holder is a specimen from Argentina that had a 42.5 centimeter long when fully uh, unwound. That's like, uh, I, well, I don't know. I got to work it out because I pulled it in centimeters. So the average erect human penis is between 13 and 18 centimeters. So it's 42 centimeters. It's five to seven inches is 13 to 18. So 42. Six. 16.73 inches. Jesus Christ. This duck could be in porn. I mean, man, holy fuck. A 16 inch pecker. <laughs> Give me a break. Um, so duck vaginas are also corkscrew screw shapes, but they turn the opposite direction to the duck penis. They're made to be like a labyrinth. Um, so the entrance has several blind pouches, so you might like be poking your pe- your duck penis around in a duck vagina and go down a dead end. You know what I mean? And have to double your penis back and go oh, not, not another dead end. Oh, oh, oh. It's meant to like be confusing in there. Uh, after a male duck mounts the female, the erect duck penis like comes exploding out. It doesn't just like wiggle around and go in. It like he gets it all lined up and then the duck penis comes like flying out. It's like five velocity like a, duck dick. Yeah. Like a spiral barbed <laughs> missile into the, into the vagina. And it all occurs in like half a second. Jesus. And the uh, penis can reach velocities of up to 1.6 meters per second, which is that's fucking insane. So what led to such complexity? That's a good question. Uh, Drake's males being violent with their sexual encounters and completely unconcerned with consent. So Rape they're rapists. Ducks. Yeah, they're rapers. Um, ducks do so their, pair their off. penises are just like evolved to be like, this is the ultimate rape penis. Yeah. And then duck vaginas are like, this is the ultimate anti-rape vagina. It's like a, an arms race that's, you know, still going on. And if either one, if either side wins the arms race, ducks go extinct. Yeah. So, so they got to keep up with one another constantly. Uh, yeah. Ducks do pair off to mate. However, stray males often force themselves onto other ducks, females, uh, this is especially true in, in mallards, wild ducks. Rape is a normal reproductive strategy for mallards, says Dutch researcher Keys Molliker. Mallards are canceled. Yep. Uh, although approximately 40% of duck sex is forced, only one in four matings are successful uh, due to the aforementioned complexity of duck vagina. So Ducks are fucking weird, bro. Not only would ducks die off as a species if one or the other you know male female dichotomy it gets better it gets a vagina that's too complex or a penis that's not complex enough not only would they pass away if they did that but if they didn't rape they would die too rape is an yeah. it's an essential part of the survival of their species species if it ducks wasn't, it wasn't gotta happening. rape bro let me tell you that yep. let me tell you that it might be controversial to say this but ducks ducks gotta rape bro but you, uh, you probably think that that's the most disturbing aspect of duck sex. It's the one that most people have heard, but you're wrong. Um, we also don't know. We, we also know that some ducks are necrophiles. Ducks uh, like so the duck is still warm. Why not? You got to get it where you can get it, I guess. Um, 
Dutch biologist Keyes Molliker became the first scientist to document homosexual necrophilia in ducks. Uh, Molliker was working in a new glass because wing. the new that's because of all the degeneracy in, in duck media lately, you know. Yeah, these ducks they start watching this degenerate media. Next thing you know, they're necrophile homosexuals. It's terrible, terrible yep. shit. <laughs> So this guy Molliker was working in this new glass wing at a museum that turned out to be a bird killer. Uh, birds obviously don't understand the concept of glass and they were constantly, I guess, flying into the windows and dying on impact. So on June 5th, 1995, Molliker heard the bang and it changed his life on that day. When he looked outside for the building's latest victims, he saw a hapless male mallard uh, with a live one nearby the live male ducks uh, then mounted the dead one and started copulating with it. Uh, ready to take notes, the researcher went outside and watched the duck trying to have sex with the corpse for 75 minutes uh, before picking up the dead bird and freezing it. I knew I'd seen something special, but it took me six years to decide to publish it, Mulliker said in his talk. The researcher <laughs> was like, yeah. I don't know. If, do I really want to get into this? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I guess he was right to fucking get into it because it earned him the, uh, 2003 Nobel biology prize. Um, and Hey, there you guys, uh, so check it out, guys. Check this out. Um, ducks, fuck other dead ducks, gay sex, dead ducks. What do you think of that? Nobel prize. I think that's Nobel prize worthy. Yep. Here you go. You got it. It's yours. It's fucking yours, bro. You're not even close. Not even close. Not even a contest. Yep. And that is the strange and wonderful world and sometimes horrifying world of ducks. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, let me know. We'll do another one, maybe. Quack. Quack.